Hello and a very warm welcome to our special presentation, Budget of Hope. The economic survey has been presented. The survey provides a summary of the annual economic development across the country during a financial year. And to understand what corporate India wants from Budget 2021, I'm joined by Mr. Dilip Chinoy, Secretary General of FIKI. Mr. Chinoy, welcome to Blatsabha Television and thank you so much for joining us. Thank you, Trippi. Thank you. Pleasure to be here. Sir, it is said that this budget is going to be a historic one under the shadow of the COVID-19 pandemic. There are indications that this budget could be a game changer. What are the expectations of FIKI from the upcoming budget, sir? So, you know, you talked about the economic survey and the budget. So the economic survey uh, yesterday, uh, which actually uh, pointed out that uh, it is possible and we need to be, you know, not worry about sovereign ratings. And therefore, the indications are that the fiscal uh, deficit is not so much of a concern now. And therefore, we need to look at breaching the FRBM rules, resetting the FRBM rules in terms of fiscal deficits over a three-year period. So if we have money, then what we could do with that expenditure is really to promote investments and promote uh, the whole area of uh, the consumption. So if you look at two of the indicators that are not doing well, the first one is uh, private consumption and the second one is private sector investment and even to some extent government investment. So how do we actually spur that? So the first thing is if you look at consumption, we need to look at uh, investing in those sectors that have a multiplier effect, infrastructure, real estate, uh, housing. And if you look at the uh, whole area of investment. So how do you promote investment going forward? The budget in the economic survey indicated healthcare that we need to expend, you know, increase the spend on healthcare. So if you're looking at healthcare expense, you can do it two ways. One is direct government expenditure. And the second is giving incentives to the private sector to invest. So currently, for example, Section 3580 uh, allows a deduction for hospitals above 100 beds. Now, since we need beds in tier two, tier three, and other sectors, can we extend it to all hospitals? Can we say that uh, the amount of deduction for training, because we need uh, para uh, you know, uh, services there, we need nurses, we need doctors, we need to enhance capacity there, paramedical services. So can we say that you increase 150% uh, deduction for the money invested uh, there? And look at other incentives in that uh, area. In infrastructure, Again, can we front load? Because we have to create immediate uh, employment. So low cost housing, the housing scheme that was announced for the urban, uh, for the urban uh, worker housing scheme, low cost uh, rental scheme that they looked at. If you look at investment in that, it will actually go forward. The second thing of uh, promoting uh, private sector investment, of, for that, there are multiple things that are required, and primarily in manufacturing, they've announced the PLI uh, scheme uh, there, production link incentive scheme. We need to increase to little more sectors. Uh, the 15% the, uh, reduced in, uh, you know, income tax rate that was said that you will, you will have till if you invest till March uh, 31st, 2023. Uh, perhaps we need to extend that to March 20, uh, 2025. And we need to look at how do you promote exports uh, and how uh, do you promote innovation? So these are the uh, in, uh, things that come out really from uh, the economic uh, survey uh, going forward. All right, sir, so you talked about investment. Now, the government has also unveiled the Atnirbhar Bharat package. We saw tranches of uh, announcements made by the finance minister there. What are the other steps that the government needs to take to ensure that India becomes a preferred destination for investment or hub of investment? So if you look at most uh, companies from overseas that are looking at India, there are three major uh, challenges, right, uh, which they said. One was they said that your labor laws are inflexible and the government has announced the labor codes and, you know, we are going down the path. And if we can actually implement and execute that uh, very quickly and the states get on board, that is one. The second, they, they actually comment is that the ease of doing business uh, in India is uh, you know, not as predictable as they would like. And therefore, if you look at the economic survey, the economic survey also talks about that in a, in a whole uh, chapter. And yes. can we look at both at the center and the states? Because if the states don't follow the center uh, example, then the ease of doing business won't actually improve. 
And the third uh, thing that uh, most uh, people talk about is the stability and predictability of uh, the tax rates. And some uh, stability needs to be ensured and more important, predictability. And with the faceless assessments and the other aspects coming in, and maybe if they can actually zero on of some of the exemptions that were permitted earlier but were not permitted in transition but are required by industry, then it can address the issues of uh, international investors there. But for those people who are invested in India, already have investments, we need the cost and ease of doing business along with the improving the competitiveness of uh, the uh, uh, businesses in India. And therefore, you need to focus on capital costs and you need a development uh, financial institution to ensure that low uh, capital, long-term capital is invested for long gestation projects. The second is you need to improve connectivity. And again, that is the investment in infrastructure of major manufacturing hubs to ports, to airports and others so that the cost of logistics is greatly reduced. And third, the Electricity Amendment Act, which was actually a uh, bill, which was actually on the anvil, which says that the cost of power and if you're cross, if you're subsidizing uh, power to certain users, don't get industry and, and commercial users to subsidize it. Do a DBT mechanism uh, that will actually enable the cost of power uh, to uh, come in. And then, uh, you know, the other innovative thing that was done for some of the things in the Atma Nirbhar uh, package was uh, in incentivizing the states to give a certain amount of incentives uh, and do some reforms at the state level by financing uh, assured linked finance from the center. So if they can extend that thing to improving infrastructure, to uh, you know allowing power reforms to be done, then these incentives given by the center and the states will actually add up and then it will make it very uh, competitive for people to manufacture in India. And of course, the whole migration of the export incentives, uh, you know, and the remission of duties paid, the rot tape scheme uh, needs to come out very, very quickly. There needs to be adequate uh, kind of uh, outlay in that area so the exports uh, are not disrupted. Mr. Chanan, the economic survey also talked about V-shaped recovery. What is your big picture, big picture view of the economy moving ahead? So according to the uh, PICI survey, which we actually launched, uh, you know, sometime before the economic survey came out, uh, there we have actually said that the uh, that the growth next year would be, you know, around uh, 11%, uh, which is what uh, the uh, economic survey uh, also predicted. And, you know, most of the uh, uh, people are also saying that next year's growth will, in terms of growth, will be, uh, will be around double digit uh, there. I think V-shaped recovery is absolutely there. But even if you look at, you know, if you say that minus 7.7% this year and plus 11% uh, next year makes only a delta of 3 to 4% uh, growth over last year. And in most uh, sectors, we are seeing uh, growth uh, coming back uh, to pre-COVID levels. In some uh, sectors, it is much higher than pre-COVID. Uh, you must understand that in the just before COVID, there was a deceleration going on in some sectors, but most of the sectors are actually doing that. And the main issue here is that they, for it to continue, they don't want demand to slacken. And therefore, you know, the whole thing of how do you ensure that consumption continues? And therefore, you know, if there is some uh, uh, methodology to give cash in hand of the consumers by uh, you know, rejigging the either the taxation laws or allowing the exemptions to continue, then you would see those sectors having a V-shaped recovery. But in certain sectors which are high physical contact in the services areas, it is not yet uh, a recovery in that sense. But it will take some time. But overall, the economy will uh, have a have a uh, growth rate uh, going forward, and the budget has the ability to actually do two things. Increase confidence of uh, people, common people, uh, to be able to say that, okay, we can go out and spend and it's not necessary to save uh, there. And second, it can create an economic, uh, it can create a full eco environment for increased investment um, uh, going forward. And if that does that, then the, you know, we might even exceed 11% uh, next year. But again, looking at percentages is not actually, uh, you know, correct because the first quarter of next year, we might even see a 30% growth because the first quarter of this year 
was minus 23 percent, right? Yes. So let's not go by the percentages. Let's look at you know where we want to be in relation to 1920 uh, rather than 2021. All right. Uh, also, the fact that COVID is not over, but the rollout of vaccine seems to be comforting. What do you think would be the impact of this massive rollout on the economic sentiment going ahead? So, I think India and the way India has managed the rollout of the vaccine, we are the number one in terms in the world in terms of the number of uh, you know vaccine vaccinations done over the uh, period uh, is really uh, commendable. But it's going to take time for the entire population to be vaccinated. The whole uh, you know country is actually now you know. Uh, living in hope, you know, uh, that the vaccination will provide uh, immunity and we can continue business as normal. But till that happens, and that is that is a way, that is a few months away, because, you know, by March, it's 300 million, then, you know, the whole uh, population getting, in, uh, you know, inoculated and, 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 uh, and going forward will take up to August or September. And therefore, in the interim, we have to be very, very careful. We have to continue to use masks, uh, continue to keep social distancing, uh, continue to ensure that you know we wash our hands and, san and you know follow the sanitization protocol. And therefore, you know, again, I'm coming back to the you know huge impact, uh, you know, close uh, tourism, hospitality, uh, restaurants, um, you know, even retail stores, uh, you know, cinema halls, etc. And that's a big part of the economy. Services is a big part of the economy. So, again, if the vaccination was not there today, you know, we would not see be seeing light at the end of the tunnel because of the vaccination process and more vaccines coming out in the near future. Hopefully, even a you know a nasal kind of a vaccine from one of the Indian manufacturers. You will see this uh, you know this you know constant hope and confidence being generated. And if you know. A, a lot of Indian uh, economy is dependent on international travel. And we have to see when international travel can uh, open. The second wave that happened in UK and other countries, uh, is, you know, and now more so in the Middle East and Dubai, uh, we have to be, uh, you know, uh, careful about that and ensure that we continue to protect ourselves and, you know, manage COVID going forward. And if that is happens and, you know, we need a citizen's movement in this, we are sure that the V-shaped recovery will continue and uh, we will be back to uh, you know high growth path again. All right, Mr. Chinoy, you're exuding confidence about the V-shaped recovery, but of course the focus has to be on investment and consumption and all eyes now on Finance Minister Nirmala Sitharaman on that big budget, that budget of hope of 2021. On that note, thank you so much for joining us, Mr. Chinoy. Thank you, thank you. So that's all we have for you in this edition. Thanks for watching and stay tuned to Rajasabha TV.